Well, just how big is Whatcom County and where is the eastern border? Dave Cinco asked several people last week and found it may be further than you think. How far east do you think Whatcom County goes? Let's see, through Maple Falls. I haven't been here long enough. Oh, I think it's up near Glacier. I'm not sure, because it runs into Skagit. Hmm. I have no idea. Well, it's close to Mount Baker. Stunning, maybe. I don't know if it goes as far as Mount Baker or not. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's someplace up past Deming. Someplace, but don't ask me where it is. <laughs> That's kind of a, a fun thing, is to um, uh, meet people from the, the Bellingham area or uh, that west part of Whatcom County and to somehow <laughs> let them know that they're, they're in Whatcom County here. It's uh, to them, we just, we're, we're totally uh, past their vision of where <laughs> Whatcom County lies. And starting tomorrow, we'll show you what lies in the other Whatcom County, including two company-owned towns, rugged wilderness land managed by the National Parks and Forest Service, and a deputy they call Buford. And this is a natural spawn area. They're not planted. They're actually coming up the river. All this starting tomorrow when we bring you the other Whatcom County. Where does Whatcom County end? Today in part one of a four-part series, Dave Cinco explores that question and finds a place many wouldn't think is part of Whatcom County. The sign catches many people by surprise. For many, the Mount Baker ski area is the end of the line as far as Whatcom County goes. But up Highway 20, two company-owned communities call Whatcom County home. The communities of Diablo and New Halem are owned by Seattle City Light. They were built in the 20s and 30s as the Skagit River Project, consisting of Gorge, Diablo, and Ross Dams, came to life under the guidance of J.D. Ross. The Skagit Project created three lakes and thousands of jobs during its construction. Fewer people live in the two camps now, but they open their arms to tourists every summer to show off their history and work. This was originally built because we're in a box canyon here, and we needed to get equipment and people in to build Diablo Dam, which is the next dam up. So the railroad ran to here, and the only way to run the railroad beyond this was to just take the cars up the side of the hill, and that's what this lift was supposed to do. The railroad bed came right up that road that we drove up, and the locomotive would actually drive right across this. There were tracks on it and leave railroad cars on here, and the railroad cars would the top where another locomotive would pick them up. That's the old railroad way station. We've got a snack bar where we're having coffee and cookies and light food and that sort of thing, and the snack bar is also selling 25-cent tickets to ride this thing. Further up river, boating and fishing on Gorge and Diablo Lakes are very popular. During the summer months, we have a lot of boat traffic. We have small canoes and kayaks, and we constantly have to keep watch over. That barge up ahead of us uh, has particular problems going in some areas of the lake. There may be two or three feet on either side of the barge, and that's it. So we have to be very careful with the canoes and the kayaks. Where people will get out here in their canoes, and they'll flip them over in the wind. Uh, today is relatively calm, but uh, about 2 o'clock, the wind will come up, and it'll, it'll get pretty choppy out on this water. Rides up glacier-fed Diablo Lake to Ross Dam are available through Seattle City Light for 250. From there, you can get a tour of the dam, or weather permitting, hike back down to Diablo Dam. But the sight of the massive dam is something not to be missed. No, that's not where Jack is supposed to put his finger. That's just all the water that is seeping through this dam. It's not that much considering the lake behind it is 22 miles long. The dam stands more than 540 feet high and 1,300 feet across. The water intakes for the dam are more than 24 feet in diameter and feed four giant generators. The power generated by all three dams provides Seattle with about a quarter of all its electrical needs. Several self-guided tours are available, or you can join a City Light full tour, including lunch. Guided tours usually fill up early, so reservations are recommended. For News View, I'm Dave Cinco. And tomorrow in part two of his series, Dave looks at the role of national parks in the other Whatcom County. Yesterday, Dave Cinco and photographer Bill Lewis introduced us to the easternmost business in Whatcom County. Today, we'll see what the biggest landholder in Whatcom County has to offer in part two of his series, The Other Whatcom County. Most of the land in Whatcom County is owned by the federal government, and the largest portion is managed by the National Park Service. There are only 51 national parks in the U.S., and Washington State has three. 
the largest being the North Cascades. Formed in 1972 when the North Cascades Highway went through, the National Park and Recreation Area has a lot to offer. There's just a great number of, uh, of trails, from short day trails to uh, very serious climbing routes. There are some of the trails that are more suited for family-type groups with small children. We have a, uh, a boardwalk trail that is a uh, lovely little creekside through the forest type uh, walk that's accessible for wheelchairs and uh, there's interpretive plaques on it. The area holds a lot of history too. In the early 1870s, gold mining was a booming business. The hills are full of <laughs> relics from the, uh, the mining period. On up Thunder Creek Valley here is the Skagit Queen and there's just whole mining areas that were just left as, as people walked off and left them. One of those is uh, found uh, in behind a waterfall. I mean, it's a classic. You have to uh, get in behind where the water's running down at this time of year. Uh, there's a, just a crack by a rock that you can slither down into, and it opens up into a, uh, a mine shaft that goes back in the, the mountain quite a ways. And in there is a, uh, an old uh, ore cart. The park and surrounding areas cover well over 640,000 rugged acres. Well, this park is a, not only a grand wilderness in the wilderness that is uh, uh, managed by the National Park Service, but adjacent to it, we have the uh, uh, St. Wilderness, Glacier Peak Wilderness, the Mount Baker Dioxid Wilderness. So we have, uh, uh, there's a lot of wilderness land here. Most of that wilderness is patrolled by backcountry rangers. Paula Ogden spent several years in the field and says everyone can find that one special spot. Pick a place and, um, and go watch it. You know, go check it out. Go watch the sunrise and the sunset and, and see what lives there and what goes on and, and, uh, and watch it and learn from it. The park also has a diverse wildlife population. Harris recommends if you encounter a bear or a cougar to raise up your arms to make yourself look big and to talk to the animal in a commanding and easy way. Educational programs also exist at the park. A new program called Parks as Schools will cover the geology, biology, and culture of the area. It's really hard with, uh, with all the work teachers have to do these days to, to sit down and develop environmental education curriculum. So. This will be handed to them, and, um, and they'll be able to read it and take it with them and take the kids out into the field. For News View, I'm Dave Cinco. Tomorrow in Part 3, Dave tells us what it's like to grow up in an isolated company town. Today, Dave Cinco continues his series on the other Whatcom County with a look at how two small towns got their beginnings. Most people think company towns died with the Old West, but they are still alive and well in eastern Whatcom County. The communities of New Halem and Diablo, owned by Seattle City Light, started out as construction camps for Gorge and Diablo dams. But within several years, they were towns filled with pride. Bill Newby was born in New Halem and recently retired as head of the Skagit River Project, including the three dams. He recalls things were different during his childhood. If you grew up there, you didn't, you didn't know the difference. Uh, you were somewhat restricted because if you were going to get out of there, you either had to ride the train, and the train only went out once a day. There was no way you went to the hamburger stand or the uh, restaurant or the movie. A movie was once a week in, in Courier Hall. Nowadays, if you want to catch a new movie, you have to drive 60 miles to Burlington. Videos, though, can be had at the New Halem Library, which is one of the most popular spots in town. It's a big help to people that live around here. This branch of the Whatcom County Library is paid for by Seattle City Light. Nowadays, children are bused 40 miles down the road to concrete for school. But during the town's heydays, things were different. They were underwritten by the city of Seattle, basically with an open checkbook. And... Uh, it was something unreal to what most schools experience. Because you couldn't ask for a better place for kids to grow up. It was wonderful. It was the best. I mean, it was great. County services in the area are somewhat different here in City Light territory. A little additions, changes to the uh, structures that we have here. Um, I'm the uh, person who's uh, been I guess you could say commissioned by uh, Whatcom County to be the uh, building inspector here for those small projects, mainly to keep them from coming up here uh, for every little 
project that we would need since it's such a long distance away. One thing evident in these company towns is their feeling of community. People feel very secure and safe up here, I think, and um, sometimes you lose that aspect when you're, you're outside of the place. We still try to do a few things for the, the children up here. There's several of us that are uh, called, affectionately called Skagit Brat. We, we grew up on the Skagit. We, we organize like 4th of July fireworks displays and try to do some things for the kids that they're not, you know, they don't get exposed to. There is one drawback to living here, though. I, I live in Watkin County. My post office mailing address is in Skagit County, and I have a, a Seattle phone number. It causes a lot of problems. With photographer Bill Lewis, I'm Dave Cinco reporting from Diablo. Tomorrow, photographer Bill Lewis and reporter Dave Cinco will take a look at law enforcement in this isolated part of Whatcom County. Law enforcement in eastern Whatcom County is a little different than the rest of the county. Dave Cinco explains in the final report of his four-part series, The Other Whatcom County. Law enforcement in the towns of Diablo and New Halem is done on a neighborly basis. Actually, we have a Whatcom County Sheriff. And he does a great job for us. He makes us all feel real secure. We can call him and ask him to, to turn the neighbor's dog off. Or <laughs> and he works great in that community type of atmosphere. It takes a special deputy to be on call 24 hours a day. And uh, believe me, I used him 24 hours a day, never hesitated about uh, the day of the time or night I called him or if he's days off, and he was there without a word. Well, they call him Buford, but uh, I'll tell you, George is a super deputy, and uh, if a Mountie means anything, if George is on your case, you might as well give up, because he's going to get you. There's at least one incident, though, that George hasn't solved. You might want to ask him how the big rock got in his yard. This rock it looks different than Well, this is called George's Pet Rock. I put a patrol car over the top of that. One. How it got there, we don't know. But he was going to get revenge, but he's never figured out who's done it. A couple of individuals up in your schedule they were going to get pieces of that rock. On a serious note, though, Deputy Sheriff George Sharp has a lot of territory to cover. He is responsible for all criminal actions in the national forests, parks, and recreation areas. But there's a lot of interagency help. The Park Service, Sheriff's Office, and the Border Patrol are all cross-commissioned. The park owns the property, but they're not responsible for criminal jurisdiction. The Sheriff's Department is responsible for all criminal jurisdiction within the park here. So we have primary three agencies that are working together, the Washington State Patrol, Whatcom County Sheriff's Office, and the National Park Service. Behind this 540-foot high wall of concrete lies Ross Lake. It stretches 22 miles all the way into Canada. While this lake and scenery are beautiful and peaceful, it does pose a problem for law enforcement. By the time we got done, we thought we had a drug smuggling case. It turned out to be an alien smuggling case. That's Whatcom County. Yeah, they're down at Chancellor and Barron. Uh, oh, you bet. I was over there on a uh, gunshot uh, where a kid had accidentally shot his partner. And I was over on a claim jumping. And we have crime up here just like they have down in Bellingham. We've had drive-by shootings. We've had uh, armed standoffs. And this is in the past few years. But we only get one where you get multiple downtown. Well, I've been up here on a two-year tour. I've been here 15 years. And this is what community policing is really all about, that uh, you're their cop. You're on the street for them. Uh, there's a lot of times you just get called for questions that uh, don't even concern law enforcement. Uh, you know, where, where can you live, live in a prettier community uh, than you do here? Uh, I'm addicted to it. With photographer Bill Lewis, I'm Dave Cinco reporting from Buford Country. We've received quite a few calls on this series. Some of you can't believe that Whatcom County extends all the way to Hearts Pass. Even some map makers don't believe it, but it's true.